So, um, welcome everybody to um, uh, Mathematics at Derby and we are very honoured to have with us uh, on this uh, session Dr Naira Chamberlain who is President of the in, in, uh, Institute of Mathematics and its Applications. Welcome Naira. Hello. Hi. Well, very, very nice to be here. Thank you very much indeed for it. Oh, that, uh, we're, we're honoured. It's a pleasure. And I, I hear you're isolating at the moment um, in the maths attack room, I've seen mentioned on Twitter. How's it going yeah. there? Yes, it's also <laughs> going good. I mean, seeing as you have, let's say, two big whiteboards, you have 200 mathematical books. Here you go, you've got a number of uh, larger computer screens. So all, all being good. I'm, I'm coping with isolation. Wow, sounds like mathematics nirvana. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, um, well, uh, you very kindly agreed to talk uh, to us about um, sort of your current uh, presidency at the IMA and uh, so your motivations for being a public voice uh, for, for mathematics. But I think um, kind of in advance of that, um, I'll perhaps um, just uh, introduce you, if I may, with um, uh, sort of a list of uh, the accolades, if that's okay, that, that, that you've achieved, because I think that's, uh, I think that's sort of uh, really important introduction. Um, so, of course, you're the IMA president for 2021, um, and you've got your PhD in mathematics from Portsmouth. Um, you are on the, you are the Science Council's list of the UK's top 100 scientists. Um, you're also the first black mathematician in, uh, in Who's Who, which I found, um, yeah, really, really surprising. Um, that there was not a you know, black mathematician in there before. Um, and um, you were also in the power list of the most influential people in African, uh, of African and African Caribbean heritage. Um, you also have an honorary doctorate from the University of Greenwich. Um, you've also been uh, voted uh, the world's most interesting mathematician. That was actually a competition that you uh, won against um, uh, Matt Barker. <laughs> I noticed you're also um, a visiting fellow of uh, uh, Loughborough uh, University um, and you're also in the top 100 of influential people in BAME UK Tech which I believe was a, a financial uh, times uh, list and um, there's uh, another uh, piece of work that uh, that you do um, which is which is really cool uh, you're an expert voice for the BBC um, and um, you want to talk a little bit you're going to mention you talk a little bit about that and um, how you got involved with that uh, uh, talking about Monte Carlo um, uh, solutions for who wins at football so this is <laughs> when I say who wins at football that's showing my kind of lack of knowledge of football um, so um, you'll have to talk us through that if that's uh, if that's okay <laughs> thank you yes um, it was about over five years ago, the, um, the BBC decided to uh, train a number of people what they used to call as expert voices. And so I went to the BBC in, in Birmingham. I got trained as, a, as an expert voice. And so then what they did is they said, OK, we, we want you to have, let's say, a Twitter current and, you know, talk, talk about things. And one time I was listening to a radio station a couple of years later, and it was about Aston Villa. Now, I, I'm a supporter of Aston Villa. And Aston, this was, like I said, the last time Aston Villa was in the Premiership. And there was a there was quite a bit of a trouble um the, what the sports dj on the sports show the radio wm he was saying was <clears throat> aston villa fans please phone in and tell us what's the probability of aston villa staying in the premiership so you're having all of these villa fans phoning up and saying yeah 10 percent, 50 percent, 70 percent, 80 percent and i'm thinking well they are guessing and and as a mathematician or as a mathematical modeler we have a motto never guess you know our guesses are we call assumptions which we put down at much down at the lower 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 levels and then we build a logical argument towards the solution so i'm thinking well let me make some simplifying assumptions and build a logical uh, um uh, argument towards solution and so what I decided to do was build a model based on a random walk where you know I, I can say there are three branches three points to, for a win one point for a draw no points for a uh, uh, for, for a loss and there's a probability you go through these branches and you just repeat it over and over again depending on the number of games that you have left and of course the starting position is the points that Aston Villa has already got and then by doing that and knowing that there were a certain number of points that Aston Villa needed to reach to to get safety there doing a Monte Carlo simulation repeating it over and over again I came up with a probability of Aston Villa remaining in the premiership and it was as it happens it was sort of like um, two percent and it got lower 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 and then subsequently they got uh, demoted but the real thing that had to occur was the following season 
when Aston Villa got a new manager and everybody said, yes, Aston Villa's going to do well. The new manager wasn't doing too well. And then after nine games, Aston Villa only had sort of like 10 points and was close to the bottom of the championship. And they sacked that manager and they got in a new manager, I believe it was Steve Bruce. And everybody was saying, yes, they're now Aston Villa's going to make the playoffs. And everybody's saying, yeah, Villa's going to make the playoffs. <laughs> and so what I did is I decided to use the model. I adapted a little bit and did a simulation to see what was the probability of actually Aston Villa making the playoffs, knowing that there was an average points tally for teams to, to reach the, the, the players based on the last 10 years st uh, statistics. And so I did that. And as a BBC expert voice, what I tend to do is when I come up with something mathematically interesting, such as this, I tend to email it to, uh, to, to the radio station. And then I got up the next day and received a, an email early in the morning and say, can you come into the radio station? Because we want you to talk about, to talk about this, Aston, talk about this mathematical model. And I asked the villa, I said, okay. So I went in and, uh, and I sat down, was invited into the radio station. And they said to me, he goes, so wait for it, Aston Villa fans. Here we have an expert in mathematics. And this mathematician <laughs> is an Aston Villa fan. And he's going to tell us the probability of Aston Villa, of make, Aston Villa making the, the playoffs. I said, Dr. Chamberlain, over to you. I said, thank you very much. Um, now, using some um, simplifying assumptions, I've done a simulation. And, uh, and the probability of Aston Villa making the playoffs is three percent and there was like a burst of laughter all through the studios because i think they were like they were not aston villa fans there then they asked me to explain and i actually explained and i and it all went really well from there and then then i, I, kept... I expect um I, I suppose when the, the the dj was first asking that that question what they were inviting was um sort of biases or uh, opinions and, and getting some lively discussions going i, I suppose they weren't um expecting a um, a, a fully fledged mathematician to come with a sort of a proper answer, so to speak. Yeah, and and thing is, I mean, yes, I mean, even though let's say I'm a, I'm Aston Villa fan, I'm I am you know going to be a, math, a mathematician first. You know, I'm not going to change the numbers to say yeah and make some, make sure and say that Aston Villa is going to be win the win's going to win the Premiership and they're going to go and win the Champions League. No, that's going to be that. That's no. I want to look at the numbers as as it is you know so math mathematics is mathematical modeling is all about prediction understanding and try to influence and this is very much down on the prediction prediction sense and so and then the i think two seasons later and very well this was actually last season um i used my mathematical model actually to predict the number the number of points that aston villa will get come the end of the season and that's also predicted who would be the top six now out of those top six i managed to predict five of them correctly um the only one i didn't correct uh, predict correctly was this the, the team that finished in sixth place and it just so called happened it was derby county because they did go on a bit mm -hmm. of a roll come at the end of the season I only gave them sort of like a three percent chance of getting to the playoffs and they they got under the playoffs and did really really well but in terms of aston villa i what i said to the um to the radio station i said look uh, i said Aston Villa, there's a very good chance that Aston Villa is going to be making the, the playoffs. And actually, my model's predicting that in the playoffs, they will be playing against West Bromwich Albion because they will finish three points behind them. One will finish on 80 points. West Brom will finish on 83 points. And it just like what happened. Um, you know, uh, so I was just driving, driving along, you know, the next day, listening to my radio, not really thinking. And then it got the, my, my, my statistics Got, got an answer saying, and it was announced like, and the world's most interesting mathematician says that Aston Villa will finish with 80 points and they will play with play against West Brom in the players. And I'm thinking, oh dear, <laughs> but you know, and uh, but it's a sucker happened that, um, in terms of the, the, the model, it was just a come happen, it was spot on, but probability <laughs> will be spot on, but they was they were spot on. But that was interesting what you're saying about them sort of quoting you as the most interesting um, mathematician. Um, and I think sometimes there is um, a kind of a perception of mathematicians um, being sort of working on ivory towers and working on pure problems and, and being boring. And, and, and obviously, Naira, you're anything but boring. And how does that um, kind of, because you've, you've not worked on, on just, you know, acute things like this. I mean, you've worked on sort of massive real world problems like working on the HMS Belfast, uh, no, Queen Elizabeth, sorry, HMS Queen Elizabeth um, uh, uh, aircraft carrier. Um, and uh, and many other things but besides so um how does um I, i'm guessing this all kind of feeds into your theme for um your presidency of the ima which is mathematical I identity um so how does it link with uh, link with that yes because i mean 
the thing is, is that when people look at, let's say, math, mathematics and, you know, as people from, from other professions that look at mathematicians, they, they think that mathematics, or in, I sometimes I use the word frozen, they believe that mathematics is very much a frozen subject. They think that mathematics is like a hammer, it's, it's like a tool. Like, if you see like the hammer, the hammer's probably been uh, existing since probably at, at least since Noah's time, building, building the Noah's Ark. And all, and, but the same hammer that you looked at Noah use is probably the same hammer that we use today. It hasn't really changed that much. And people's perception that mathematics is the same is that it's frozen, it's cold, it's boring, it's mechanical, and it hasn't, hasn't changed. Well, guess what? what I I'm saying is this mathematics is actually the indisputably the greatest subject in the whole wide world it is creative you know it is more creative than music it's more creative than art you, you know mathematics is, is is wonderful it is beautiful it is brilliant that is you know and what we have to say to what i say to mathematicians is we have to embrace a a stronger more powerful mathematical identity because things at another day we are the mathematicians we teach science to scientists we teach geography to geographers we teach engineering to engineers you know the, the you know and of the day the modern economy cannot strive without mathematics that is what we need not <laughs> thinking oh here's some numbers here's some numbers oh that, no <laughs> that is not mathematics mathematics is is beyond and more than that and that's yeah so well, it's such a beautiful message because um i mean that's what we're trying to say through the society at, at, at derby that you know maths is everywhere and it is in every subject and so on and that's why we're trying to talk to lots mm. of people outside of the subject uh, subject as well yeah yeah so um uh the so you've uh you've you've is there anything else you wanted to show on the spreadsheet because i know you had a couple of um uh, oh okay uh, so a couple of sheets yeah so so um if i was going to go back you know so for instance okay so we're going back to let's say the um uh, the the football stories the football story so so yes yeah, so i had so i've been building let's say this Monte Carlo simulation based on the random walk that actually does predictions of where teams will finish or how many points of the get or whether one team will finish above the other. And um, let's say earlier this, this year, what we had was um, for the Premiership is that um, I think there's uh, Pep Guarni, and he, you know, he's uh, you know manager of, the, of Man City. You know, I think he was just like 22 points. There were any places like 16 games, and there's like 22 points behind Liverpool. And he was and he was he's saying in the in the media saying, oh, it's it's over, it's unstoppable. Liverpool's unstoppable. We've you know. It, there's Liverpool's, Liverpool's now won the championship and I'm thinking wait a minute I wonder if using the same methodology could I actually work out what's the probability of Man City finishing above um, above Liverpool so so if I just start this so now that you can see the screen yes yeah yeah okay so uh, so here we go what is the probability that Man City will finish above Liverpool FC now again this model is based on old data and it's based very much in the past it's not based on <laughs> where Liverpool, yeah, it's not based on <laughs> live where liverpool are right now you know the points there so this is so if i press um, start so what i have here is i had this is a scenario where i had liverpool playing 16 po uh, six, playing 16 games man city playing 16 games liverpool having 44 points and man city having 32 points yeah now in in the football season you play about 38 games so you're not they're not even halfway through so they're 22 points behind not even halfway through but but um um what you have is um what you have is that you have um pep garnier is already saying you know it's already you know liverpool's already uh was already uh, won the championship so i'm thinking okay well let's one let's do a simulation based on the random walk doing a monte Carlo simulation what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a thousand histories so i'm going to do this scenario over and over again because you may have one time where liverpool will be above man city and then another time you'll have the uh, man city above liverpool and it will it, and what we're going to do is that we're going to count how many times that occurred and also we want to work out the average so, so the average number of points so, it won't, so even though it won't be an integer it'll be more like a real number because this is the average number of points yeah so okay so what i'm going to do is if i should click this button and go simulate and again so very quick simulation so in here right so what we have is that the problem is who will finish top so it's saying in this scenario it said liverpool will finish top 98.5 uh, percent of the time and and Man City would finish on top 1.5% of the time because, again, I'm making the assumption that really and truly, if Man City finish above Liverpool, 
they, they very much will, will win the Premiership. I can't really see any other team getting there. So that's why I'm only doing the simulation of just these two teams. Yeah, but also what I'm doing is the the, the expected final points is I had Liverpool down and getting around about 100 points, and Man City ended up with 88 points. Now what I've done is in my random walk is again let's say there are three states: win, draw, lose. And what I've done is I've given each um, uh, each team a probability of actually. Um, winning, drawing or losing and that was actually based on the statistics from the previous season so I'm giving Man City a slight advantage because they did win more, they did actually win the championship um, last, uh, last season so that's, so that's what I'm that's what I'm doing but by even using those probabilities that that came from the previous season, you can see if we come up with this statistic, you know, 98%, 98.5% 98 uh, as, as opposed to 1.5% now if I'd actually go to this graph, yeah. What you have here is that you have the probability that the football team will finish up, uh, finish the season with points that exceeds X points. So, light blue being Man City and and red being being Liverpool. And there you can actually see the distribution. So, really and truly, in terms of the simulation, that the highest you could actually see Man City was getting was was uh, ninety, uh, you know, ninety seven points. But they're not. It, it, it's not really happening. But here you can see where Liverpool. Liverpool is, you, you know, you're saying that there's a reasonable chance that they will actually finish beyond 100 points. And again, just using mathematical modelling and using, making some simplifying assumptions, stating what the assumptions are, building up that logical argument, you can see what solution, and you can see that what I've delivered here is a mathematical model, which is both transparent and challengeable. So you can actually say, well, we did, if you do disagree with the, the probabilities of winning, losing, drawing, you can actually change that, rerun it, and, and, and away we go. And also, as the season goes on, let's say, for instance, as the, um, uh, the number of points at Liverpool and Man City uh, points actually changes. You can actually put those recent recent changes into the model, rerun it, and come up with your come up with your new probability. And that is mathematical modelling in action. Well, that's fantastic. I mean, that's absolutely kind of inspirational. I, I would imagine to to many, especially those interested in in football, so sort of through mathematics um, that you can become through the magic of mathematics, you can become a, a football oracle, um, which essentially you, you are as, as as well. We can add to add to the list. Um, and it's led you, um, I think, all of these uh, sort of interesting things in mathematics, uh, which you know the the uh, opportunities you've taken kind of with both hands. Um, I, I read in the uh, Mathematics Today article and you, you kind of just slipped it in there without um, uh, without sort of elaborating on it but um, you, you said you had breakfast with the Jamaican Prime Minister. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about how that came, came about and elaborate on that story? Yes, I mean um, what happened was um, the, I, I believe that there was a big Commonwealth conference occurring in London, I think it was around about, I think it was in, in 2018 and the, what the, the Jamaican Prime Minister and his entourage actually state, stated to to an organisation, uh, I think it was like a, a, a Jamaican bank that's, that has its um, um, headquarters, one of its headquarters, European headquarters in, in, in England, in London. They're saying, well, what we want to do is we really want to meet up with people of Jamaican diaspora that's, that have been successful in their career. So, so I thought, so I got this email saying, "Oh, would you like to have breakfast with the uh, just the Jamaican uh, the Jamaican Prime Minister?" I said, uh, "Let me think about it." <laughs> <laughs> so and so uh, I went there, and then what you had is that you had people like um, uh, 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 Levi Roots, the the one that went on the Dragons Den and and and, and, and doing like this uh, just looks like this reggae reggae sauce and had like a had like a restaurant, and you had like also had like a high flying. Um, people of Jamaican diaspora that was really at the top of uh, the profession and it was really good that um, for instance I was there representing mathematics so and the, they had us each standing up and they went to explain hello who we are what we do and I said hello my name is Dr. Nara Chamberlain and I'm a mathematician. Wow. So I don't add up numbers I'm not an accountant and then explained <laughs> No way we yeah, go. so yeah, it just so. gets it gets better and better. So um, a career in mathematics is a route to stardom as as, as well, and and being invited um, by sort of national leaders to to chat to them and everything. That's yeah. wonderful. I mean, in, in, we we haven't got much time left, but I mean, I I've, I've got a really important question that I want I wanted to 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 ask. Um, which was, um, what is your message uh, to young people who have thought about studying maths um, but wondering whether they're good enough? Okay, well, I've got two. There's two messages. There's two messages I have there. Is um, 
One, uh, something that my dad said to me um, one time when I got discouraged by my career teacher to become a mathematician, my dad said this to me. He says, you don't need anybody's permission to be a great mathematician. Now, from there, you know, even I think I was at the age where you only half listen to your parents, but I listened and it stuck with me. And one of the activities that I did do, uh, which I'm grateful, is that I started to research mathematicians about their, their personality, their characters, their attitude, their motivation. And one of the things I found out was when I actually started studying the, the, the top mathematicians in the world is that, that they all have a similar attitude. And it's quite interesting. And the attitude is this, in, and, and you'll find it in the book by Cedric Finale, who's called, um, you know, uh, you know, in his book about uh, about theorem, he go he said he says something like this, and all the other top mathematicians say something like this. It's like they say the a mathematician isn't someone who finds mathematics easy. A mathematician is someone who sees a problem and never ever quits. That's a mathematician, and I think that's worth me saying again. A mathematician isn't someone who finds mathematics easy. A mathematician is someone who sees a problem and never, ever quits. That's a mathematician, yeah? Well, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, well, that's, that's amazing. And that's actually something that I, I kind of needed to hear as well, because I don't, I don't find it, I find it easy, but I'm kind of, I'm committed to it. And I, you know, I want to, 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 to get to the, because I'm only in my first year at the moment, obviously want to get to my, to my third year, but I think that's an important message for, um, for people at school or whatever have been thinking about uh, mathematics that, you know, it's not for the, to the talented per se, but more for the people who are committed and interested and curious. And as you say, never gives up. And I think that's, um, uh, that's a, yeah, that's a, a, a really yeah. amazing. Uh, yeah, this is, I mean, it's true because I'm mean, seeing it's the end of the day. I mean, most some people, you know, they get this in this this mind or this 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 myth that somehow you have to be almost like this can't this countdown style of mathematician. You see your problem and you can solve it in two seconds flat and thinking, whoa. But seeing it's the end of the day, the na the whole nature of mathematics, where the problems gets more challenging and challenging at that, at an exponential rate, is guess what? You won't be able to solve mathematical problems like like that and eventually everybody will come to what's called the mathematical waterloo where all of a sudden you can't be just reliant on memory or or, or quickness it is about pure raw understanding a logical argument and that <laughs> takes that takes building a foundation building up that didn't work building up that didn't work building up that didn't work and keep on moving forward 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 and then hello you got a breakthrough now when did you become a mathematician did you become a mathematician when you solved the problem or did you or was you a mathematician right at the beginning guess what you was a mathematician right at the beginning wow <laughs> thank you so much um, naira for agreeing to speak to us this that that was absolutely um inspirational and i um i know you've uh you've, you've got lots of um sort of blogs and and videos and articles and so on so we'll put a few of those links in the description to this uh, to this video um and it just leaves me to say Thank you again very much for um, your, your, your leadership and your inspiration and especially for doing this interview with us at the um, uh, Derby Math Society. Uh, so thank you. Um, and uh, thank you very much, um, everyone from Maths at Derby. <laughs>